Hi, my name is Daor from the Sweet Tech TV, and today we're going to talk about the evolution of mobile phone technology. Let's get into it. No. no. This series is going to be filled into parts. So the first part is going to be from the start of the 20th century till 2007 and the second from 2007 to 2020. So here we go. Early cell phones were very bulky and heavy, as you can see in this picture, and they were not cheap. But the story of wireless communication started way before the first phones were ever introduced. The first mention of an attempt of wireless communication was allegedly made at the start of the 20th century. As you can see in this article from the San Francisco Call newspaper from 1908. In 1904, Professor Albert Jenke, or however his last name is pronounced, completed the first wireless call with the help of an Oakland telephone and power company. The call was supposedly made from Kansas City to a place that was 7 miles away. At that time that seemed impossible, so Professor Jenke had to go to court to prove that it actually happened. The case was later dismissed, but Professor Jenke didn't pursue his so-called wireless phone further and it never got to the manufacturing floor. Later, in 1918, the Germans supposedly started testing some form of wireless communication systems on their military trains that ran between Berlin and Zossen, and later on a track between Berlin and Hamburg. Then, in the 1940s, during World War II, the soldiers started using handheld radio transceivers, also known as walkie-talkies. They have been in use ever since, mostly for police and military business, as they work on FM frequencies and on the push-to-talk method. That means they are in receiver mode by default, and only one side can talk at a time, unlike today. In 1946, engineers at Bell Labs started developing a system that would allow the users to make and receive a call in their cars. The system was introduced to the public on June 17, in St. Louis. Soon after AT&T introduced the first service that would support that system, called MTS. At the start it included the 100 biggest cities in the US and later they added the major highways. It worked on the push to talk method and was used by only 5000 users. The equipment needed for use weighed around 36 kilos and the installation looked kinda like the one on the picture here. In 1965, AT&T introduced IMTS, the improved MTS, that allocated more radio waves dedicated just for the service so more people could use it sim simultaneously, but still only around 40k people used it. To clarify, many people call the services that I've talked about here so far the 0G, also known as Generation Zero. The 1970s was a huge decade for the evolution of mobile phone tech. During this decade, they started developing a, ser a service called AMPS that had been theorized since 1946. The service would officially be launched in 1983 as the start of 1G. So, in 1973, the first real mobile phone was introduced by Motorola the Motorola Dynatec 8000X. After 25 years of different concepts and ideas, it was a real handheld device with no wires. It was invented by Dr. Martin Cooper with the help of John Mitchell, the lead engineer of mobile tech projects at Motorola. The phone weighed about 1.1 kilos and was 23 centimeters long, 13 centimeters thick and 4.5 cm wide with no screen. The talk time for the phone was only about 35 minutes and the battery needed 10 hours to fully charge. The first call was made in April of that year in front of the Hilton Hotel in Manhattan 
by Dr. Cooper to his arch rival Dr. Joe Engel of Bell Labs. The phone was only a prototype at the time, so for the next decade they tried to refine it even more. And so, in 1983, the phone finally became available to the public. The refined model had an LED display that showed the numbers. At the time, the phone was a symbol of wealth and the future, as its price was a whopping $3,095. And I mean, then they complained how, about how much the phones cost today. The phone used the AMP service previously mentioned as the start of 1G. It was a service that used an analog signal with allocated higher frequencies and it wasn't encrypted like the later generation services. The phone calls were also a direct connection, so a call center operator was not needed anymore. Also both of the parties talking were able to talk and hear the other at the same time. In 1991, 2G was first presented in Finland, and the first network provider to actually use it was Radio Linea. 2G introduced a digital signal with services such as SMS, also known as text messages, MMS, also known as multimedia messages, that were encrypted, so only the recipient was able to open and read the message. 2G also introduced PA, or wireless application protocol, then it also introduced Edge uh, that brought a slow connection to the internet to the phones. The first phone to actually use 2G was Motorola International 3200. It was still kind of a big phone, but at least it had a digital signal. It had one hour of talk time and took five hours to charge. The first mass-produced phone that used a digital signal was the Nokia 1011. It weighed only about 495 grams and was 19.5 cm long, 4.5 cm thick and 6 cm wide. It had a small monochrome screen and it could save up to 99 numbers. It also had a rubber antenna. Its successor, the Nokia 2110, that came out in 1994 was the first phone that was able to send text messages. It also had a bigger screen than most of the previous models. In 1996, Nokia released the original 8110, also known as the banana phone. It was nicknamed that because it had kind of a curve like a banana and then later it was made popular by the Matrix. In 1997, the first phone without a visible antenna came to market. That was the Haganook Global Handy. Then next year, Nokia released a phone that was the first to support VAP, Nokia 7110. The same year, Motorola released the first phone that could be used internationally, the Motorola Timeport meant for businessmen who traveled a lot for work. Now let's move on to the 2000s. In the year 2000, Nokia released the legendary indestructible Nokia 3310 with the intent to get closer to the younger population. It's the phone we still think about to this day as the most durable phone ever made. The phone was released in multiple colors and you could just switch out the whole body with a body of a different color without damaging the phone. I think this is the only phone in existence that probably everybody has heard about, even though it's an old phone. It sold about 125.6 million million units between the years 2000 and 2005. In 2001, Ericsson released the first phone that supported Bluetooth, the Ericsson T39. The company also released the first phone with a color screen that actually showed the colors everywhere, not just the text, the Ericsson T68. The phone was featured in the movie James Bond 
died another day. Then, in 2002, the first Symbian OS phone was released, the Nokia 7650. It was the first phone with a camera and a color screen in Europe. The camera was just 0.3 megapixels, but it started a trend not using the phones just for calling and messaging. It had an OS that supposed that supported many different languages and a refined UI for that point in time. Even though later it lost out to Android and iOS, it was the first OS that could be touted as the smartphone OS. The same year, a lot of network providers started rolling out support for 3G. 3G brought an upgrade in the mobile data department, especially the speed. It introduced UMTS, the system that enabled data speeds up to 3 megabytes per second. It worked a little differently than the systems in 2G, so new cell towers had to be built and new frequencies had to be put in use. 3G also introduced HSPA later uh, and HSAP Plus. Both of the services had way higher download and upload speeds than 2G. Then in 2003, the first phone that supported 3G was released, the Motorola 830. In 2004, Motorola released the Razer V3, the thinnest phone at the time. It was another legendary phone and one of the most popular of its time. It was a flip phone that had two screens, one on the outside the one when you flipped it open on the inside. The outside one was used for time and notifications. The inside display was a TFT 256K color display. It also had a 1.3 megapixel VGA camera and offered many games and weighed only about 95 grams. In 2005, Sony introduced the 3.5mm headphone jack on their Walkman lineup. The phones also had more internal storage, so people could use them to listen to music through the headphone jack. This is the end of part 1, the evolution of mobile tech in the pre-smartphone era. Part 2, uh, the evolution of the smartphone tech era will be uploaded in a few days, uh, so be sure to be subscribed to catch it. I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did, comment, like, subscribe and hope to see you in the next one. Bye.